Have you ever gone through a tough time and then after you've come through it, looking back with 2020 hindsight, you look back and you actually think, yeah, it was a good thing that I went through that. We've all had those experiences, right? I mean, it just really stinks to go through it, but at the end of it, you're a better person, a stronger person, or maybe even something good happened in your life as a result of it. Habakkuk, who lived 2,600 years ago, was facing a situation very much like that. He was going into a, a time where his people were going to be suffering greatly as an evil empire, the Babylonians, were going to come in and conquer them. And what's interesting to me is Habakkuk's reaction to that situation. Most of us, when we go through difficult times, we start asking God why, and we get frustrated, and we get angry. I mean, I've got to admit, my attitude has sometimes been this. I believe that God loves me, but right now, in the middle of all this junk, I have a hard time thinking that He likes me. We all wrestle with, can we really trust God when we're going through these difficult times? and Habakkuk landed in a great spot. Let's look at what he wrote in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. Through Habakkuk's example, I've learned that the problems that we face in life are not really our greatest test. The greatest test is the way we face our problems. We all have the dilemma, will I trust God or will I doubt Him? When I was 13, I stepped on a nail and it changed my life. I got an infection in my foot called Pseudomonas aeruginosa and it almost killed me. At 13, I was faced with death. The doctors did everything they could to try to save my foot. They were saying that most likely I would have to have my foot amputated. And for the summer while I was 13, I spent part of it in the hospital having four surgeries and I spent the rest of it at home on the couch with IVs hooked up to me all the time. I had to ask God, why? The doctors were able to save my foot, that was the good news, with the four surgeries and with the antibiotics. And then a year later, they had to go in and put an artificial joint into my toe, something called a silastic implant. That nail, I didn't know it, but it would change my life. Because my dream to that point was to become a pilot in the Air Force. I really, really, really wanted to join the armed forces and learn to fly planes. And I found out a couple of years after my nail incident that no one with an artificial joint could get into any branch of the military. I was crushed. I couldn't believe it. And I was faced with this crisis of faith. God, why would you take my dreams away from me? Why did you let me step on a stupid nail? And then I came to know Christ. I had heard about how he was pierced and how he had died so that I might be forgiven, so that I might be changed. And at age 15, I asked Jesus to come into my life and change me, and he did. My perspective was altered. Had I never stepped on a nail, I never would have become a pastor. I wouldn't have met my wonderful wife. I wouldn't have three beautiful children, and I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Today, as you explore Habakkuk chapter 3, I encourage you to look at the problems that you're facing in your life and ask yourself, do I tend to doubt or trust God? You see, Habakkuk didn't have the advantage that I have of looking back on my painful experience and seeing how God used it. Habakkuk died without ever having seen how God would use it. My prayer is that all of us would have Habakkuk's faith, the faith to trust God, to love God, and to worship God in spite of life's difficult situations.